is our data project for Math 120. First, you must choose a product you want to test. It needs to be something that comes in assorted shapes, sizes, colors, flavors, etc. You will need 10 to 15 individual packs of the products you choose. Here are some examples. Colored goldfish. Animal crackers. And they don't have to be very big, so you can buy like a family pack and get, you know, nine or 12 packs, you know, just stick with one product. Straws, there's different colors, fruit snacks, Smarties, Jolly Ranchers. Of course, I would pick M&Ms and Skittles. That's what I would pick, but they pick some nasty stuff and I'm sorry. Foam stickers. Oh my gosh, military toys. Oh my gosh, that's awful. Pom poms, what the heck are pom poms? What are pom poms? Do you eat them or what? No, no. Oh. What? Oh, OK. So like stick on stuff. Yeah. yeah. Rubber bands. I'm finally able to get in. Good morning. Good morning. It's Brenda Dennis. Listen, Miss Dennis, don't 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 speak too much because the computer may blow up. This is the oh. third time I've called y'all in. Oh, okay. things are running. Russia is taking over. So just I'm just letting you know we may not finish class. I don't know. We're going to try. OK, we've already had some phantom voice come in and tell me that the battery is low. So I don't know who that was. OK, we're showing everybody the project that everybody needs to turn in. Title page, you must have a title page. Please make sure it's pretty. And it shows Math 120. This is Math 120 29. Make sure you put Hubert McClure and your name and any creative work you can do to make these people happy. Introduction. Please write an introduction that says, I am doing this. I'm counting these. My product is this. You either eat this or you use it or you whatever. Take each pack, sort and count. And you're going to keep a running tally of this. OK, somebody just sound like they flushed their commode. Please mute yourselves, please. Frequency tables. Make sure you make frequency tables on each pack. And take pictures. Ooh, that would be nice. Show them that you can insert on the spreadsheet. OK. This is the part that kills me right here. They tell you what to do and then they say we will add more to this project later. Does anybody have any questions on what to do to start this project? Please, everybody has to do it because I have to grade you and it will be 10 to 20 percent of your grade. I have to do this. This is not my call. Uh, you recorded from the beginning of what to do, right? Because I'm just now getting in the middle of this. I don't know. Yes, I tell you what, Miss Dennis, you're a problem child. You're a wild child. Yes. <laughs> I have recorded it because this is so important, Miss Dennis. It's really important that we do this project. OK, hopefully nobody has questions. You just need to buy something. Of course, you need to buy something, Miss Dennis. Uh, 
I, I suggest you get a big bag because what, what's coming up? Halloween. You know there's going to be a big A bag of Skittles and M&Ms. That's what I would buy. And you could eat the ones that you don't choose. I would buy Skittles, but I can't tell you to buy. They don't want you to all buy Skittles and M&Ms. So, did y'all have a question? Yeah, so we're just going to show those and then we're done with it. Right now, you got to get something and do the spreadsheet or do a running tally, however you want to do it by hand, of the colors or shapes, whatever you decide to make it. So if you want to make it colors, then you might want to go with Skittles or colored goldfish, or if you want to go with shapes, you might want to go with animal crackers. That's up to you. Then get all the information and do a spreadsheet or do a hand tally and then wait until further instructions. And when I get the instructions, I will give them to y'all. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah so we just buy like a patch of candy. Or Whatever you want to pick. Uh, you saw the examples, you pick straws. Anything that's different colors or shapes. I think what they're trying to what they're trying to get you to do is see quali qualitative data in real world. Um, how many different types do we have to have? Uh, it said, let's see, let's go back over. Let's see. Yeah, it said uh, ten to fifteen packs, but they're talking. I mean, you saw those packs that she was using. I mean, those packs right there, how many of those come in a box? Like 20? Yeah. So you could buy one box of these fruited whatever, and that would be, you would just use half of them. I think she said 12. Charts, like, have 12 different, 12 different frequency distributions. Okay. Where does it say 12? I saw it somewhere. There it is. So I would pick, I would pick a box of something that has 20 packs in it. But don't pick, you know, like the big box of potato chips. It's got different, because that's not different colors and shapes. You would pick something that has different colors or shapes like what's been shown. I'm going to go through the examples again, just so Miss Dennis can see it. And I'm, I make sure I got to cover this because they ask us if we if we've shown everybody this PowerPoint, and we have to fill out a little thing that says that we did this. Oh, this is this is it's K through twelve messing up. This is the stuff that K through twelve has to do, and it's already creeping in on us. All right, there's some examples right there. See that Barnum uh, animal crackers? There's 12 packs. So she's saying right there that that would be fine. Anything that's got 10 to 15 packs in it. I don't see how many the goldfish has. Does it have a count on it? I can't see. It, like it looks like there's 10 in there. Now, the, the straws is a pretty good idea. You just buy two packs of straws and kill the dolphins, you know. Buy two packs of straws and kill as many animals as you can with them. The whole state of California, they got like 60,000 homeless, but what are they worried about? Straws. Welches, how many is in there? Does it say? I don't see. It's probably got it down at the bottom or something. When is this project due? They haven't given us a date. Great. Yeah. And it's to be continued, Miss Dennis. So just on the evaluation, make sure you say that this is stupid. All right. That's that's pretty much. There's some pom poms. And if you want to be a terrorist, 
you get those military like me. I'm a terrorist because I'm former military. Foam stickers. There you go. Get you some foam stickers. But see, that's 90, so you would divide, I would divide that up into like 10 packs of nine or nine packs of 10, something like that. Try to mix them up so they're not the same colors. Okay, does anybody have any questions? So let's go over what, uh, there's what you're supposed to do by hand or by spreadsheet. And that's, that's what you need to have at the end of this part of the project. You need to have the colors or the shapes. Now, how are you going to describe the shape? I guess with animal crackers, it'd be lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. I guess you would use the shapes of the, and then here you would use uh, colors or I'm sorry, not colors, but flavors. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that on the board right quick. I think what I'll do is I'll save this and put it on Teams. How about that? Yeah. Let's do that. I bet they fixed it or I can't save it. Let's see if I can do that for y'all right quick. I'm gonna turn the video off because I'm gonna make sure we're not gonna crash and burn here in a second. All right, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go ahead and get out of the video now. Let me get out of this. There we go. Let me save this. Save as stupid project PowerPoint. PowerPoint project save. Where are they saving it? Under documents. Priority one message coming in on secure channel. Okay, let me get out of that. Let me go to y'all's Teams page. And under files, it's going to be under files. I need somebody at home, if you would, when I tell you to, go and check to make sure it's under there. Priority one message coming in on security. Somebody is blowing up my phone. I don't know who's doing that. Okay, will somebody go and check and see if it's in your files? It should be called Data Project PowerPoint. And please mute your microphones, please. Somebody sounds like they're having a wrestling match. Does somebody see it? Yes, yeah, it's in there. Okay, good. That way y'all can watch it. My daughter is, she sent me like, why do y'all do this to your parents? Y'all wait till work and then y'all send me like three text messages all together and it's like two, three paragraphs. I know it's got something to do with her parking decal at school. I don't know what. I don't know what she's talking about. It's something that can be done later. Lord and mercy. All right, so that's that. So now let's get to what we need to get to today in which pretty much I'm shot because I had everything pulled up that I was going to do and now I've had to start over. So give me a second to pull it up. <clears throat> Excuse me. There, got that pulled back up. Now let me pull up what I need to pull up. Just give me a second. That's why I get here at 730. So I can have all this pulled up.
Right. Now, there we go. This this computer is acting like it's got a virus in it or something. Putting stuff off the page. It's doing all kinds of weird stuff. I don't know what's going on. We all know it's Russians. It's the Russians. Now I'm going to pull up something else right quick. And Wild Hog Road. Highway 187. There we go. There's Highway 187. But it's the wrong one. That's 187. There we go. There's 187. And I'm not going to be able to. There we go. Snip. And new. And save. OK, now we're starting 5.1 today. And I'm going to pull up the whiteboard again. I appreciate y'all being patient with me. Nobody fussing. And here is Highway 187 better known as Wild Hog Road. Now, if you're from Anderson, you know where Wild Hog Road is. Wild Hog Road is between the double bridges and Pendleton slash Clemson. Pendleton or Clemson, Sandy Springs, whatever. Now, what in the heck does this have to do with with probability, well, I'm fixing to tell you. I've traveled Highway 187 Wild Hog Road a good bit in my lifetime because I was, my office was at the Pendleton campus. I've spent 15, 16 years at the Pendleton campus. So I had to drive Wild Hog Road every day. Why did you drive Wild Hog Road? Well, I live in West Anderson. And my other alternative is to go down Clemson Boulevard, and I really don't want to go to jail by, you know, hurting somebody. So I don't travel Clemson Boulevard because it makes you know, you know, road rage. So and the traffic and the red lights and all that stuff. And technically, there's only two ways to get. If you live in West Anderson, there's only two ways, and one of them is Clemson Boulevard, which is right here. OK, those orange, those, uh, I don't know what that is, or that may be Clemson Boulevard, and this may be, I can't remember. But anyway, and this way. Now, West Anderson is right here. There's the double bridges right there where it says South Carolina 187. That's the double bridges. OK, crosses the lake. You turn right, and it's a straight shot to Pendleton. OK, well, it takes 16 minutes to travel at a moderate speed. It takes about 16 to 18 minutes to travel Wild Hog Road from Garrett's. That's the store right there. And the Portman, what's it called? The uh, Marina, you know, but what's the the galley? That's where my daughter works. Well, she don't work right now, but anyway, the galley's there in the Portman Marina. Anyway, you turn right and it's a straight shot to Pendleton. Now, the good thing about this road is there's no what? There's no red lights. There's no stop signs. 
It's just a straight shot. In fact, if you come to the Anderson campus, the best way to get to Pendleton is to hit 24, cross the double bridges, and boom. You take, and it's about 16 to 18 minutes. No stops, no stop signs, no red lights. It also has a lot of traffic on it, so therefore you can't pass. If you have an eight o'clock class at Pendleton and you live in West Anderson and you get on the road at 730 and you get here at 730, you're going to be late for your class. Well, Hubert, I thought you said it cost 18 minutes. Exactly. But you forgot about the little blue haired ladies club. Right about there, you're going to get the little blue haired ladies club. And what does little blue haired ladies club do? They drive 33.3 miles an hour and they set the cruise at 33 because you can't start the cruise until you get 30 miles an hour. So they set their cruise at 33 miles per hour. And guess what? You're going to be behind them until you get Pendleton High School. Let's see, Pendleton High School is right about, I know what road that is right there. Pendleton High School is right here. And Waffle House in Pendleton is right about there. And the QT is right about here. Okay, so you know where you're at now? All right, so Pendleton High School is right there. And when you get to Pendleton High School, you're about a quarter, three quarters of a mile to the red light right here. And you get about 200 feet before that red light and you say to yourself, I bet that woman's going to turn left. And as soon as you say that to yourself, what happens? She turns on the left turn signal. Now, it doesn't have to be Wild Hog Road. How many times has that happened to you? It happened to, so that means that you can tell the future. Yes or no? No. Nobody can tell the future. And I mean that with 100% certainty. Nobody can tell the future. If somebody ever walks up to you and asks you if you can tell the future or they can tell the future, all you got to do is ask them one question. What's the one question that you need to ask them? How did you know that? Huh? Okay, we did. Okay. So we did the wild hog road. Well, we're doing it again. All right. And and if you did the wild, if you did the numbers, you you would be able to tell the future. But the problem is that person is going to say, oh, well, that's not what I do. No, you're a fraud. OK, you cannot. Now, what did we talk about 20 questions? OK, 20 questions is law of deduction. Nobody can tell the future, but I can if you if I have a if I have a stand that says I will tell your future and you walk in at that point, I know that you're self-conscious about your present. So I'm going to feed off of that and I'm going to ask you questions and I'm going to eventually get you to tell me all about your life with the questions that I asked you. And then I'm going to tell you your future and you're going to walk out. Being con. OK, that somebody in a probability and statistics or a logic class could have done for free and you gave that person 15 or 25 dollars you could have got a logic student or a mathematics student to do it for free by the use of deduction so nobody can tell the future okay especially those people that say i used to have a friend that used to tell, doesn't say used to um used to tell me that they could tell me my future if I wrote down my dreams and they would interpret my dreams. Everybody with me? Y'all with me? Now, why am I? OK, first of all, what is your dreams? Exactly, your mind is venting. Your brain is venting. Your brain is letting off steam, OK? First of all, if, if you could tell the future, I could understand your dreams maybe interpreting the future. But go back to the first pretense. Nobody can tell the future. So 
if you're taking your dreams and interpreting them and you can't tell the future, then how in the hell is your dreams going to tell the future? I'm sorry. OK, I'll shut up now. Probability is nothing but predicting or and you, I, I don't know if I covered this or not. Is assigning a. Prediction. Assigning a number between zero and one to a prediction. That's what probability is. Probability is assigning a number. To a prediction. Based on knowledge. Experience. Or. Mathematics. Now, how could I predict that that woman was going to turn left? Well, there's no mathematics behind it. I did travel that road for 16 years. And I did, I do know that if you live in West Anderson and you are traveling Wild Hog Road, then you have two destinations, one of two destinations. One, Sandy Springs, two, Pendleton or Clemson. If she didn't turn right and go to the three roads that go to Sandy Springs, then what are the chances that she's going to Pendleton? Very high. So the logic dictates that since she didn't turn down the three roads that goes to Sandy Springs, that she's going to turn left and go to Pendleton or Clemson. So my experience traveling that road and my logic told me that she was going to turn left. Now, I'm explaining it to you like it would take two or three days to do this, but your brain does it what? Very quickly. Even though you don't think it's working, it's working. And that's why you can predict what that blinker is going to do, what that person is going to do before they do it at the red light. But you cannot tell the future, I'm sorry, and neither can your dreams. But if y'all get seven numbers or five or six numbers in your dreams over and over, let me know and I'll put it to the test, okay? Now, if you want to write down what their definition of probability is, it's right there. But basically, probability is assigning a number between zero and one, meaning a decimal, to a prediction based on mathematics slash data, experience, or logic. Mathematics slash data, experience, or logic. Have you ever been able to tell what something was going to happen before it happened? Yes. And that's based on those three things. Next. <clears throat> probability deals with experiments that yield short term results or what outcomes. If I flip a coin. What ends up on that coin is called an outcome. Write that down. OK, an outcome flipping a coin. The outcome is heads or tails. Law of large numbers. Now, they had a story in a book a long time ago about this. Let me check the time. And the story was that there was these two MIT students. And they took a roll of quarters. And they measured each one of those quarters. And I'm not talking with a yardstick. I'm talking they measured the weight to the 10,000th of a gram. They measured with a micrometer the 
the, the thickness they measured. And of course, of course, the US Mint, they do put out the same, you know, but every once in a while you might get one that's a little bit different. So they went through and they measured everything to the 10,000th place, the width, the height, the balance, the, you know, whatever other, the weight, everything they, and they took that information and got an average. And then they put that information into a algorithmic program to make a virtual coin, a virtual quarter. And the reason they did this is because they wanted to write a program to see how many times you would flip that quarter so that the physical probability equaled the theoretical probability. Now we're going to talk about that right now before we get started. The theoretical probability, and let's see, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Hold on a second. Why is this here? There. Yeah, it should be on, but it's not. The theoretical probability, and I'm just going to slide over here, not stand in the way. The theoretical probability, and I don't even know if I'm spelling it right. Theoretical probability is what is based on nothing but pure numbers. Okay, what does that mean? Well, somebody tell me, and this is including those people at home, what is, what is the probability of pulling a king out of a deck of cards? Okay, somebody here, probability of a king is four out of 52. Okay, does she have, she, where's your cards? Well, how in the heck do you know that if you don't have any cards with you? Basically common knowledge, right? Yeah. The numbers on every deck, the numbers of kings in every deck, you know that knowledge. You don't have a deck of cards with you. So there's two types of probability. There is the theoretical probability, which means based on nothing but the numbers, which means no observation. So we're going to put observation under here. And we're going to put a big X to. And then what I call the physical probability. The physical probability is based on observation meaning that you have a deck of cards, and I usually do this in class. I usually give out a deck of cards to like three or four groups. I have five decks of cards, and we usually do this. But since everything's so out of lumpus right now, I'm not even gonna try that, okay? It's based on the observation. Now, let's say that you have a deck of cards and you pick 10 cards and you, you pick one card, you shuffle, put it back in the deck, you write it down, put it back in the deck, shuffle it, pick another card, write it back in, write it down, put it back in the deck, shuffle it, everybody get the idea? And you get the following. You get a two, a six, a three, a jack, a king, a queen, a 10, a 2, a 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And there's your king, and that is 1 out of what? 10, which is 0.1. And up here, 4 out of 52 is 1 13th or one twelfth or one thirteenth 
Somebody divide one divided by 13. 0 0.076. And you see that these two do not match. Now, what those two kids were doing, what those two students were doing with the law of large numbers is there they were trying to see how many times the computer would flip that virtual coin. And what is the what is the probability of heads on a coin? 0.5. 50%. There's one side that's heads out of two sides. So the theoretical probability is 0.5. But if you flip the coin 10 times, I guarantee you it's not going to come up to be 0.5 unless you just look. What the, what the two students did is they put that algorithmic quarter to the test and they flipped it until they got a, the, a physical probability of 0.5. Does anybody have any idea how many times it would take you to flip a coin to get 0.5 probability? Anybody want to take a guess? It was right at 100,000. Yeah. And the probability was 0.4999995. Now, what is the best way to explain the law of large numbers? Cover your backside. Whenever you do statistics or whenever you do a research probability or whenever you do anything, always pull enough data to make it work. That's what the law of large numbers tells us. So instead of pulling four samples, for your quality assurance project, pull 400 or pull 40. Don't just pull four. The law of large numbers basically tells you not to be lazy with research. Does that make sense? Because the more data you pull, the better off your project's going to be. So you need to go out there and pull up all those M&Ms and Skittles. I kind of like the peanut butter M&Ms and the caramel M&Ms. I like those. You don't like peanut butter M&Ms? Uh, no, I like caramel. Do you don't like them? Huh? I don't understand why people want to put pretzels in everything. <laughs> that sucks. Pretzels is the nastiest thing on earth next to uh, those 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 things that are hard as a rock that they uh, uh, not croissants uh, bagels. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> if you're a southerner and you were raised on biscuits, those things are nasty. Like cream cheese on it, it's, not bad. it's still hard as a freaking rock. You have to microwave it like ten minutes so you eat it. <laughs> I don't understand bagels. I'm sorry. I've tried. I'm not a redneck. I tried. I tried. I tried many times, and it, I just don't understand it. But anyway, back to pretzels. I, I, biscuits. I don't understand biscuits. Okay, Miss Dennis, I'm gonna fail you. Okay. <laughs> All right. You're not helping me out, Miss Dennis. <laughs> I'm a northern. Uh, be quiet, Miss Dennis. I'm not going to hear you. If I hear you more out of you, I'm gonna throw you out of the class. All right. <laughs> But pretzels, come on. Now, now pretzels, are you like pretzels, Miss Dennis? Of course. I'll tell you what. <laughs> that was my first treat at QT. I've been oh, gosh. Them things are nasty. Going crazy. <laughs> Them things are nasty. Anyway, why do they want to put pretzels? It's kind of like, you know, you're going to eat this, damn it. I mean, why put pretzels in chocolate? Why put pretzels? Oh, Chex Mix. Oh, my. If they would take the pretzels out of Chex Mix, they would sell more Chex Mix. Anyway, it's a conspiracy. All right. So the law of large numbers is basically cover your backside. If you do a research project, don't be lazy. That's what they're telling. All right. We're moving on. Miss Dennis, you're not helping things. 
That's all right. I'll make her drop. I'll make her drop. She'll be out of here in two or three weeks. All right. An experiment. What is an experiment? An experiment, we already talked about that. That's where you actually have control of the situation. Or you, you put something into the observation. Sample space. A good example of sample space would be an event. Having two children, that's an event. Having two children, what are what is the sample space of having two children? Boy, boy, girl, 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 boy, boy, girl. This right here is called a sample space. Get used to that and make sure you can do it for two children and three children. Go ahead and do an index card for two children, which I just did for you, and three children. Put it on the same index card. In fact, you can go to Google. You know, it's a lot of work. You have to like mash a button. Okay, it's a lot of work. I'm going to show you how hard it is. Well, if I could get this screen to work. Sample space for three children. So that's a lot of work, isn't it? Now you don't need to do the don't do the tree diagram that confuses people. But here it is right here. The right side. Boy, 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 girl, boy, girl, boy, boy, girl, 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 boy, boy. Girl, boy, girl, 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 boy, girl, girl, girl. Write that down. Because that and the one I just showed you with two children and three children, that will either be on my test or it will be on standardized test. So you better make sure you know how to write it. And it's a whole lot easier to put it on the index card than to try to come up with it because it's just. How did they get that? Well, you see how they got it. But it's. It's easier just to memorize it. And there on the left right there, right here is two children. Boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. And it should be boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl. I don't know why that's I don't think that's right. This one is the. And I'll show you a trick of learning the war. You can actually go back and you can change this to two children. Look at there. Isn't that amazing? And hit images. And it'll somewhere on here it'll show it. There it is. Boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl. That's the right answer. I don't know what that other one was a while ago. There's a sample space for two children. The event is having two children. The sample space is those four combinations right there. Here's the way you write a sample space. See, it says S, capital S is equal to braces, boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl. Okay. I will. I tell you what, Miss Dennis. I will. I will. I will concede that I I have eaten bagels when I cut them up into bite-sized pieces. Okay. Is that fair? Sure. <laughs> they have bite-sized bagels. They make those. Yes. Yeah. Oh, what a waste. <laughs> Anyway, I'm not going to agree with you, Miss Miss uh, Dennis. Bagels are ba bagels are not my favorite. They may be your favorite, but they're not my favorite. <laughs> All right, an event. But I'm glad that you brought in input because that makes the class go faster. Thank you, Miss Dennis. You're welcome. Okay, that were, I just covered that. I'm not going to cover that again. 
There, there's what I already told you. Probability has to be between zero and one. Write that down. That means a decimal between zero and a dollar. So if I give you 1.75, that's not a probability. If I give you negative 15, that's not a probability. If I give you 0.75, that's 75 cent, that's a probability. If it's between zero and a dollar, that means it's a probability. Zero means very unlikely. One means very likely. And 0.5 is somewhat likely. If you add up all your probabilities in a table, they should equal one. If it doesn't equal one, it's not a probability. They will give you an example of that here in just a minute. You don't have to write that down. Just, just write down the sum of probabilities must equal one. OK, here is a probability model. And look what they picked, M&Ms. And look at the probability distribution. Now, all of those, are those probabilities between zero and a dollar? Yeah, 12 cent, 15 cent, 12 cent, 23 cent, 23 cent, and 15 cent. And if you add all those up, they should equal one. Now those those do not happen. It is not a probability model. All the probabilities have to be between zero and one. And if you add them all up, they should equal one. If those two things do not happen, you put on the test, this is not a probability distribution or this is not a probability model. Will you get that on the test? Yes. In fact, I have two questions on my test that ask you if this is a probability model. One has a negative probability automatically. Nope, can't have a negative probability. You can't have a probability over one. If an event is very unlikely, the probability of the event is zero. Why do I not like to use the word impossible and certainty? Because it holds you down. OK, in probability and statistics, those words are not used a lot. You know another word that's not used? Perfect. Why? Because nothing is perfect. Words that hold you down are not used, and I don't I don't agree with this slide because I would say it is that if an event is very unlikely, the probability is zero. If an event is very likely, the probability is one. There goes some geese or gooses, Canadian gooses. They come down to our pond. I have a pond on the farm right behind my house. And uh, we have about 15 or 20 geese that land on the pond. Of course, I shoot them all. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. It's a joke. I'm just kidding. I don't shoot very many animals. Huh? I didn't hear you. No. I've walked down. In fact, if you walk down the pond when they're there, they take off. They don't. Now, I guess if they if they had babies, I guess they would be aggressive. Mr. Huber. Yes, ma'am. You, did you say, did you say if the event is likely, likely than the probability, than the probability is, is? OK, OK. Very unlikely is zero. Right. Very likely is one. OK. okay. Yeah, I don't like to use those two words. Just like. If there's a there's a test question on my test and a an unstandardized test because that's where I got the question from. It says 
if you have a probability of zero, does that mean the event is impossible of happening? And in other words, that means it cannot happen in no way whatsoever. And that is a big false. If anybody's ever read birth control, birth control promises what, 99.9 .9 or something like that? Yeah. Does that mean it's impossible? Oh, hell no. Okay? Because things can happen. Always remember that with probability and statistics. There is no definite, certain, whatever. That's why I don't like those two words. I don't like the word perfect in probability and statistics. I don't like the word concrete. I don't like the word, in other words, you can't fix a certain word to probability and statistics. That's why very unlikely and very likely is a whole lot better on this slide. So I disagree with this slide. This is probability in a nutshell. Whether you're talking about, now they call it uh, empirical. Empirical probability is when you observe. And notice it's got the word observed. Highlight the word observed. And above empirical, put physical. This is when you actually roll a die, or you actually flip a coin, or you actually have a deck of cards. You put the number of times something happened over the number of times tried. They say the frequency of A over the number of trials of the experiment. If, you, if you're trying to pick a king out of a deck of cards and you pick five times, then you write down five or how many times that king showed up out of that five times. So if it showed up one time, it would be one out of five. If it showed up two times, it'd be two out of five. And that is your probability, physical probability, or the empirical probability of picking a king out of a deck of cards. Now, of course, the more times you try, the better the result. And right now, small numbers aren't worth anything in our small number of trials. Not good in probability and statistics. That's why when you see a poll on TV or magazine or newspaper, what do you always look for? Two things. You look for how many people they survey and you look for the margin of what? We're going to get into that in chapter nine. Anything above three percent, so use it for use it for birdcage liner because it's not worth anything. And that's why you have to be educated when you look at a poll. You can't just look at a poll and say, "Well, that's that's the gospel." No, you can't do that. Now, I've never heard of past the pigs, but it sounds like past the pigs is some kind of a like rolling the dice. Has anybody ever heard of past the pigs? Past the pigs is a Milton Bradley game in which pigs are used as dice. That's awful. I think they should report that to PETA. Points are earned based on the way the pigs land. There are six possible outcomes, like a die. There's six sides to a die. A class of 52 students rolled, 52 doesn't matter, mark 52 out, 52 doesn't matter, that's a red herring. A class rolled basically 4,000 times. And out of the 4,000 or the 39, 39, I don't know why, they just didn't make it 4,000. Been a whole lot easier math. 
Okay, 4,000, what happened? Well, 1344, side with no dot. Side with a dot, 1294. Razorback, that's a wild hog, for those that didn't know that, 767. Y'all ever seen a wild hog? Not good. You ever, if you ever come up on a wild hog in the, in the woods, if it don't run away from you, you better find something to climb. Cause them things are, those things that, if I wanted to meet anything in the woods, I'd, I'd take a bear before I'd take a wild hog. Them things will eat you up. And they got those two teeth. Woo! Actually, they got four, but usually the top two are not good, but the bottom ones, they're awful. Trotter, I don't know what that is. 365, a snouter, that's the snout. 137 and leaning jowler. Jowler is like the cheeks or the jawbone material. Uh, that's 32. So, what would your probability be of side with a dot? It'd be 1294 over 3939. This is, this, see, they, they rolled these. So, this is physical, empirical probability because they rolled it. If I walked up to you and said, how many sides does past the pig have? You would go, I have no earthly idea. Not like a die. A die, you know there's six sides. Okay, I'm gonna shut her down. Let me see how far we got. Uh, and that's what they're talking about here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this one there. So there's your probabilities. So write that down and we're gonna stop right there. And I'm going to leave that up for a few seconds while I pull up y'all's attendance. And y'all are recording that page, so it's not recording what I'm doing. It shouldn't be. And I need to see who's here. You took and it down, Dan. I'm sorry, say again. I'm, I missed it. I didn't finish the table. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Hold on. It's not supposed to be doing that. There we go. How's that? Thank you. That should fix it. All right. Let me go to faculty and it logged me out. What a surprise. Maybe if I just throw temper tantrums. If I throw temper tantrums, will I get my way? Huh? Hell to the no. Exactly. Although some people think that if they throw temper tantrums, they get their way. Ah, oh, shut up, you. Oh my gosh. This is so ridiculous having to type in these. I'm sorry, but if you're a teacher, you're going to be in the room for an hour and a half. A little like they would set the timers on the logins to an hour or an hour and 15 minutes. Just mm, shut up. Thank you for your email, Miss Dennis. I just got it. <laughs> just in a nick of time. I know. <laughs> All right, attendance tracker, attendance tracker, 120.29 and week six. And OK, broom, coin, Dennis, broom, coin, Dennis, Cameron is not here. OK, King Lee Lott, King Lee Lott, Laverne Miller Peters. Laverne Miller Peters, Miss Nagoyan's here. Okay, Richardson Scarborough Scruggs, Richardson Scarborough Scruggs, Smalley Smith Smith, Smalley Smith Smith. Wow, I think we're going to have everybody here today. Terry and Wright, Terry and Wright, and White is not here. So the only two people not here today 
Wait a minute, Miss White, are you here? Yeah. Yeah. I thought so. Which one are you? Olivia. Okay, all right. And who else? Your last name. You're here. We've got perfect attendance today. So that means everybody can goof off the rest of the week. Because I'm not going to take attendance in 12029 again. Or don't have to. Okay, so I'm going to shut this off and see if anybody's got questions. Stop recording. And.